We have multiple coronal holes that are rotating in through the Earth strike zone that could bring us more aurora, and a new sunspot emerges on the Earth-facing disk that should brighten your day. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this past week has been a bit on the quiet side. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, you don't see a lot going on, but we do have multiple coronal holes, a couple in the north and one in the south, and they're beginning to rotate into the Earth's strike zone. These will be sending us some pockets of fast solar wind over the next couple days that could be bumping us to active conditions at mid-latitudes and definitely to storm levels with a good chance of aurora at high latitudes. So aurora photographers definitely keep your batteries charged because you're definitely going to get a chance, especially if you're at high latitudes. At mid latitudes, there's got a skosh of a chance. We'll just have to see how it pans out and how long that fast wind will last. Outside of that, though, we also have a bright region emerging on the Earth facing disk. This is region 2813, and yes, it is a sunspot. So this is boosting that solar flux. And along with a couple regions that are rotating into Earth view from the sun's far side, we're also going to continue that nice boost of solar flux. Now, as we switch to our far-sighted sun, this is Stereo A, and it's looking at the sun pretty much from the side. You can see those bright regions, especially in the south. There's a couple of them. Only one of them, though, really has kind of managed to stay emerged. The others have kind of submerged beneath the surface. But still, that's enough to keep that solar flux boosted. Plus, we've got some kind of wispy plage regions in the north that are also going to be rotating into Earth view. So radio propagation on Earth's day side should stay in the margin range and that is good news. Outside of that though it's a pretty quiet disk even on the sun's far side but you know what it's good that the space weather is really quiet this week because we have that helicopter ingenuity that's on the Martian surface that's going to be taking its first test flight here in the next week or so. We want the space weather to stay quiet because that little helicopter is very space weather susceptible. It's early spring in the northern hemisphere on the Red Planet, near Elysian Planitia where InSight is, and in Jezero Crater where Perseverance Rover and Ingenuity Helicopter are poised to make history yet again. Now, Ingenuity right now is getting its batteries charged to 100% in order to survive the Martian night, because even in spring, the temperature change between day and night can easily be 100 degrees Celsius, and that is not easy for Ingenuity to handle. In fact, when Ingenuity finally lightly touches down on the Martian surface, it's going to have a heater in order to keep itself warm enough to survive the Martian night. But thankfully, spring also means that the skies are remaining clear and the winds are finally dying down. And thank goodness, also, the space weather is beginning to really cooperate and stay nice and calm. And this is important because Ingenuity is actually a bit more susceptible not only to atmospheric weather on the Red Planet, but also to space weather as compared to Mama Perseverance Rover, because it doesn't have the protections that the Mama, Mama Rover has, so it's going to have to survive completely on its own. In fact, as we take a look at the dust maps going into the beginning of April, we can see that the dust storms really have died down. In fact, all we really see in the Northern Hemisphere is a little bit of a dust up near the Meridiani Planum, but pretty much in Elysian Planitia and also in the Isdis Planitia, things are pretty clear. So both InSight and um, Jezero Crater, where Perseverance and Ingenuity are, things are looking really good. However, we can't say that necessarily for the Southern Hemisphere. When we take a look at Curiosity Rover, well, Curiosity is actually beginning to see clouds in the sky. In the Southern Hemisphere, it is early autumn, and that's when the clouds begin to build up, especially near twilight. So near Mount Merceau, Curiosity is actually using its sky cam to study those clouds right now. In fact, in this brisk autumn season for Curiosity in Gale Crater, the high at temperature is a minus 20 degrees Celsius, and the low is a cold minus 73. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the third quarter phase on our way to a new moon, and by the 7th, the moon will still be about 20% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, you're going to still have a little bit of light coming from this companion of ours, so you're going to need to check your local rise and set time. 
Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating some pockets of fast solar wind from the coronal holes that are rotating into the Earth's strike zone, first in the north, and then it's going to be followed right on its heels by the one in the south. So at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting active conditions with up to about a 25% chance of a major storm. This is going to happen sometime after Easter and as we begin to move into next week. Now, mid-latitudes, we're only expecting unsettled conditions, but we do have up to about about a 20 to 25 percent chance of active conditions and once again this could last easily through the end of the trailing end of the weekend in possibly in through the middle of next week before things begin to die down so aurora photographers especially at high latitudes you have a very good chance to catch some more aurora at mid latitudes it's going to be a little bit more fleeting so only dedicated people should chase aurora and only if you're reasonably you know high high levels probably like in canada and and in the higher end of the uk maybe even tasmania but i it, it'll be very fleeting if you catch any at all so that won't last all that long we're probably going to have better chances later on. But Aurora photographers, hey, you know, any chance while the sun is quiet is a good chance. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything continues to be in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We only have one sunspot in Earth-facing view this week, and that's region 2813, and it's not a flare player. So we don't have any risk for radio blackouts, and that should make you GPS users on Earth's day side very happy. Don't worry, your GPS reception should be pretty nice. Now, luckily, that region, though, is boosting the solar flux. It's managing to keep our solar solar flux in the mid 70s and likely even if region 2813 begins to fizzle, which it might do over the next couple days, uh, we do have a couple new regions that are rotating into Earth view, and they're, they're going to boost that solar flux as well. So likely we're going to stay in the mid-70s all week, which means marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side for amateur radio operators and emergency responders. So we'll hang on to, those, uh, to that propagation level, and let's just hope more regions begin to emerge soon. Now also because we are still climbing out of solar minimum. Our cosmic ray flux is a bit more intense than we'd like it to be, so you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, you are in the moderate range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers, so please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is, stays a bit on the quiet side. Now we do have a couple coronal holes that are rotating into the Earth strike zone here over the next couple days, and they're going to be sending us some pockets of fast solar wind. So roar photographers, especially at high latitudes, you definitely get a chance for some storming and some good aurora views easily into about midweek before things will calm down. Now down at mid latitudes, though, and it'll be a bit harder to chase. So if you're in deep lat in mid latitudes, I probably wouldn't bother at all. If you're at the higher end, yeah, maybe you could if you're dedicated, but don't get your hopes up too much. Meanwhile, we also have a new bright region, a new sunspot actually on the Earth facing disk that's emerged over the last day or so. And this region is boosting that solar flux and helping uh, maintain marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side. But don't worry, this region is not flare active. And that is good news, especially when it comes to, you know, not making noise on the bands. But also, we want that space weather right now now to be quiet. And even on Sun's far side, good thank goodness, Stereo's view is showing we are also quiet because we have that Mars In Ingenuity helicopter that is going to be taking some test flights here in the next couple days. And we really want that space weather to be quiet because poor Ingenuity does not have all the protections that the Mars Perseverance rover has. So it's very space weather susceptible. So let's just hope that that space weather stays quiet over the next week or two and allows Ingenuity to have a beautiful clean and wonderful flight for its first launch. Now, also because uh, we don't have any active regions really on the far side of the sun, we've got a couple bright points, but it's not really all that big a deal. The GPS reception on Earth's day side should continue to be good. And uh, as long as you stay away from the dawn dust terminators and away from Aurora on Earth's night side over the next couple days, your GPS reception should be pretty top notch. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.